Welcome to Electron Online. In this case, we're going to find the energy stored in a capacitor after we insert a dielectric with dielectric constant K. And remember that the energy in a capacitor, when there's just air between the capacitor plates, is one half. The charge across the capacitor times the voltage across the capacitor. And of course, since we have a battery connected to the capacitor, the, the voltage across the capacitor will be V, and the charge can be calculated by using the equation the capacitance is equal to Q divided by V, so therefore the Q will be equal to C times V. All right, so we now know what the energy is in the capacitor before we insert the, the uh, dielectric. What happens when the dielectric is pushed into the capacitor and now occupies the space that was occupied before by the air? We already know that the capacitance will increase by the factor K. So we know that C, the capacitance nu or final, is equal to the initial capacitance times the dielectric constant. So we saw that in a previous video. But let's go ahead and try to figure out what the new energy stored in the capacitor will be after we push that, uh, the dielectric in there. Well, we can say that U final will be equal to one half the new charge or the final charge in the capacitor and since it's connected to the battery while we're doing this charges can actually flow onto or away from the capacitor and secondly it will be V final the final voltage across the capacitor however since the capacitor is connected to the battery the battery will maintain the same voltage across which means that V final will be equal to V initial and so therefore we can say that the final energy on the capacitor is equal to one half times Q final times V initial whatever the initial voltage was that will not change so only the charge on the capacitor will change so let's figure out how we can determine what the final charge will be on the capacitor well for that what we're going to do is we're going to go to the concept that the electric field strength can be equated to be equal to being the potential difference divided by the distance between the plates and maybe I'll use the variable R that probably makes it a little bit easier to deal with so let's go V over R and that is of course in the case that the electric field is constant so here that's for E is constant and then we can write the equation as E equals V oh, now let me rewrite that what I wanted to write was V equals E times R by bringing the R across and again that's when E is constant and if E is not constant what we want to write here in the differential form that the V equals E times the R. So what we can determine here is if we can calculate the electric field between the plates after we insert the dielectric constant we from that can then find the change in the voltage or the change in the potential which of course we know remains the same and that's kind of the strategy and how we're going to try and figure out what the new energy will be between in the capacitor. All right, so what we do next is we imagine that we have a large plate, like an infinite plate, full of charge. Why do we do that? Because capacitors, since the distance between the plates, the distance between them is so small, the plates act like they're infinite plates. And we know that with an infinite plate, the electric field strength, the E field, coming away from an infinite plate can be determined to be equal to the charge density on the plate divided by epsilon sub naught. And what happens now when we add a dielectric constant or a dielectric, so we put a nice dielectric across that plate, we now know that the electric field is equal to sigma divided by K times epsilon sub naught, the dielectric constant times epsilon sub naught. And remember that the charge density is going to be equal to, uh, let's see here, that's going to be uh, charge on the plates divided by area, so this becomes K epsilon sub naught times area. So that would be the electric field with dielectric, this would be the electric field without the dielectric, so we can write this as Q divided by epsilon sub naught times, and let's see here, that would be A, and that would be of course the initial charge, and that will be the final charge, because the initial charge and the final charge are probably not going to be the same. All right, now what's next? What can we do next? Uh, let's see here. We need to equate the electric field to the voltage. So the voltage difference between the plates, we know that V is going to be E times R. So therefore, initially, before we put the dielectric, we say V initial is equal to E initial times R. And E initial is going to be written as Q initial divided by epsilon sub naught times A. And V final 
the final voltage across the capacitor, and of course we already know that V initial equals V final, but bear with me, is going to be the final electric field times R, and the final electric field we found was Q final divided by K epsilon sub naught A, and now, of course, I can't forget the R on these two equations, like that. And since we know that V initial equals V final, V initial equals V final, we can then say that those two equations must be equal. So let me write them over here. So Q initial times R over epsilon sub naught times A must equal Q final times R over K epsilon sub naught times a, so those two, those two have to be equal to each other, those two equations, and then if you take a look at that, if we cancel out the r's, and we cancel out the a's, we can answer that q final equals, if oh, and the epsilon sub naughts cancel, q final will equal k times q initial, so we can then conclude that q final, yeah, let me write over here, so I'm already on that side of the board, so q final equals k times q initial. All right, so from that we can now realize here that q final equals k times q initial, so now we can write this as one half times k times q initial times v initial, and then if I rewrite it a little bit more, this is equal to one half, oop, let me go like, let me write it like this, this is equal to k times one half Q initial V initial and of course this is the initial energy on the capacitor before we inserted the dielectric so now we can say that U final is equal to K times U initial therefore it's equal to K times one half Q initial V initial and there we have it that's how we find the final energy on the on a capacitor after we insert the dielectric when the capacitor is connected to the battery. Of course, it's a different result than when the capacitor is not connected to the battery, because if it's not connected to the battery, we do not maintain the potential difference here. That's the same, and we'll have to work the problem out differently. But that's how we do it when the capacitor is connected to the battery.